Hello, John Montoya here, Professor Montoya from the Architecture De and Engineering Department. I'm the Associate Professor. I'm going to be talking today about my class in 1020 3D Architectural Modeling, where we are using Revit, Revit for our, uh, Architecture. The Architectural Modeling with 3D Revit. This is an Autodesk Revit product. Uh, this is part of our Common Core classes, so I did get a section of it, and it has been passed through curriculum committee, so it, it, it does have a certain level of uh, sufficient information to it, but of course uh, now as each time you want to go through something, you want to add things that you've learned and update. Uh, so I do have uh, some different postings on my front page. I have the links. I'm currently trying to make sure that all these links work, so I'm going through some of that. So I've had success, but I've also had problems where if I have another, a second section of this class, uh, some of the links may not work. If I duplicate it uh, through Canvas, uh, it could just be that some of the files drop out. What I'd like to do now is to talk about my presentation for this class. The OTA final assignment, uh, again, uh, John Montoya here, and I would like to present the class I just talked about, uh, the architectural modeling. Uh, currently, I'm teaching this class as a hybrid, so I have classes on Monday and Wednesday, and then on Friday we go online. Uh, but here are the things that I would like to have utilized uh, from this taking this course. I want to test all hyperlinks and then purge out anything that is extraneous. Uh, I want to add some third-party links. Uh, Autodesk for Education is one, Pearson view, and maybe a, a Wiley textbook view. An open source uh, textbook would be great for this class. If one exists, that would be perfect uh, because one of the hard things I have is, is coordinating written a textbook with the online class. Uh, it'd be nice if it's all in one place and, and the digital version would be perfect. Uh, I'd like to add the library to the sidebar. Um, I also uh, I'm wondering if I should keep students able to see each other. I think that's beneficial and at this point I'll stick with that. Uh, I would need to include more praise and student success boosters. Uh, how would I increase my social presence? I would add the Loom. I've seen some of my colleagues uh, talk about the Loom recording for grading. I think that's a great idea. And social presence. Right now, I think it's pretty strong. Uh, I'm not the best filmmaker, but at, at least I'm getting out there, and each time I get more comfortable uh, as I make these videos. Uh, Granted, you know, I, it's not my first thing I think of, but uh, having done it enough now, it seems a little bit easier. Uh, I want to increase my recording of messages for returned homework, as I had stated, and add those third parties. Uh, what is good about the class now is it does have weekly announcements, and I introduce the weekly module of the week, and, and both written uh, and also with video, and then with announcements. I have quick quick fix announcements. Sometimes we have uh, software problems that may occur with one student, but when it happens to five students, uh, then it's time to kind of publish, just like you would in a computer forum, the issues at stake and how they were answered. I would like uh, software assignments to being include directly recorded project videos. So I need to get better at uh, directing a video, but then also uh, being able to run the computer software uh, at stake. Additional resources that I would include. Uh, I did mention that open source textbook would be great, the library links, and need to add rubrics for this course and mention the objectives more often than tie things back to those objectives. Uh, I 
have kind of a handy way of doing it now. Um, and then the third party, I would add Bluebeam construction tools with that. And I am jumping over here to my course to kind of show you some of the things uh, that I've worked out. Uh, the course progresses logically and it builds on itself. There is the opening module for the week. Then I have a little snippet of, of what we'll be doing and the objectives are mentioned. And on one page, I try to include everything you might need for the week, uh, the PDFs, and then also, what are we going to do, the to-do list. Um, let's go over and see what the assignment looks like. Here we have the benefit of seeing one of my latter day assignments. The, the first ones are pretty rough, okay? But I have learned with enough student questions asking me, asked to me, uh, what's due in this project? When is it due? And when when they're ready to submit, they say, does this look okay? Is it, well, there should be a concrete way of knowing if something is okay because I have added a checklist. The objectives have be, that are mentioned on the uh, front page, on the weekly page now become a checklist of things that I really want. So if a student asked me, what was it you wanted? I would point to this and say, you need to check these off. And we have plenty of videos that help you get to that point. And different kinds of things that will uh, complete the project. And then again, I've, I added more on the, on the back end, the same checklist. It's just copy and paste. But uh, it helps because students scan pretty fast. The UVU syllabus guide was really handy uh, for doing the online syllabus and looking at my objectives. Uh, now it gave me a chance to see them with fresh eyes now that I have uh, some criteria that I can go further into. Uh, I noticed that my outcomes were sort of backwards. I don't know if that means a lot, but I probably going to regrade this because it should build from the uh, lowest to the highest. But as you can see, the outcomes it's like you want to learn typical building materials and techniques. That's not easy, okay? So there's so much data that's pushed into this class that you, you have to uh, take it easy and just do it in parts. Uh, so let's take a look at other closer outcomes. I mean, small outcomes that are more about each unit in the module. The student success practices based on the rubric. Uh, turned out to be uh, very good. Like I said, it's a pre pre uh, loaded class that it was handed to me, so it's it's already gone through curriculum. So it, it has meant the the basic standards, but we're adding to it, and we want to make it better and better. And so we're going to say uh, currently the syllabus has sufficient evidence of successful success. Um, items that are good are the syllabus, but it does need updates. The AI kind of caught me off guard this, this semester, so I need to add that. Make sure those links work uh, and update things. Student success resources, I would like to have more uh, links that, that send students to where they can find support, whether it be emotional, financial, or uh, food, food pantry, I would like that. Uh, simplified navigation, uh, I think I've heard someone say, a uh, philosopher, that the hardest thing is to be simple, so it's an ongoing process. And we're going to logical order of content, I think, is, is pretty well established here. The course rubrics that are missing. Okay, so I have, uh, I need to update my institutional policies. And I need copyright information for sure. Most Some of the images are, are missing that. Uh, I need to do a little bit more rigorous analysis of, of those kinds of images that I am using. Uh, again, I check those links. And uh, when something is mentioned three times, it's very essential that you must have it. So I am missing a lot of rubrics when I go in uh, to look for them. They are not there, so I'll have to get a, a good set of rubrics going. Going through this online teaching academy was very valuable to me. Uh, I really learned a lot. 
and there are topics which enriched uh, my teaching. Having all these reference documents in one place uh, to view and to, to come across that have solutions to some of the plugging questions of our day is very helpful. Uh, so I gained a lot from looking at uh, the campus resources early alert program. I just used it. Like the, the nice thing is uh, this like four weeks that we've been together, I've been able to really flip these and turn them back around to immediate use. Um, the effective Information literacy, literacy is something I even have problems with uh, between real and fake news. I mean, I get sucked into that too. So it's important to have that. Effective Google searches. Uh, now that it's a pay for play, you know, the searching isn't as simple as it used to be. And uh, these were a lot of good information. A lot of the PDF handouts were great. Uh, more social presence tools were learned. Uh, I learned a, a lot of good places that you can go to get more uh, software that, that involves students. Uh, and it was also really great to hear what you all are doing. I had a good time reading some of your uh, replies and it was very beneficial to me. So thank you for sharing. Okay, and we will go back to our course and see what other things that we can bring in. Some of the final food for thought about uh, things that I've uh, tried to simplify is the offerings. Um, I do have one thing that kind of sits here. It's kind of nagging me, and I'm probably going to take it off this week. I'm trying to incorporate Adobe Creative Cloud. It's a very valuable uh, tool, and students get it for free. Instructors get it for free. So uh, if you can use some incorporate some kind of Photoshop. It's possible that at the end of this course, when we do rendering, we might be able to break into that. Uh, I've debated whether to show people or not. For now, it stays. Uh, attendance, grades, uh, modules, of course. Uh, my syllabus page needs help because I put my syllabus on page on, on the opening page, but my syllabus directs students. And I'm going to put the entire syllabus here and just not mess around with that. Um, but like, see it kind of, it's truncated and it says, uh, what does it say? This small little thing, please go. It doesn't even say anymore, does it? F oh, full syllabus in the orientation module. Okay, so that, that's not sufficient. Uh, so, but the full syllabus, uh, we'll take a look at that because that probably needs some improvement and it wants to reside in the introduction, welcome. So this is where my work will be centered, is getting the syllabus to be more readable. Here we go. So all this should be copy and pasted back into that syllabus page and have things refer to it. So let's just take a look. Um, links are there. Textbook. Uh, also, I try to put in a few things. If I know in advance that I can incorporate uh, some of our UVU events as part of the class, if they if they can relate. And fortunately, the sustainability events for this year do relate to our program. Uh, so we, we, I like to add that to it. Uh, attendance, responsibilities, instructor responsibilities. And then we'll take a look at my grades. I've actually benefited from a lot of the grade uh, things that we've been doing, policies, I just need the AI in this one. And I have the grades uh, weighted uh, depending on what merits the most points, the actual drawing, and then the orientation. Our, our smaller bites, that could be maybe the sustainability on-site tour or some of the introductions or discussions that students do. I will end this presentation with the showing of my favorite uh, tool of the week. This is perfect. The edit assignment dates. This saves me tons of work and hopefully you've discovered it too where you can make your edits uh, right, right here all in one place and you can see what's coming up. This is keeping me uh, above water and I, I hope you will explain.